Here we are then, it's a perfect time to be staking our peonies. Um, the ground's still, still moist at this time of year and, um, and they're not so tall that they're going to have already flopped. So we're trying a new method this year, it's using hazel. And it's a product which is really useful for us because we grow it here in the garden, in the nuttery. So we can just coppice these sticks uh, in the winter time. And really the inspiration came from the rose structures that we train on hazel and have done for many years. And the purpose there is to promote flowering all along the rose shoots. But with the peony, the idea is that actually using these hazel benders to form this cage over the peony will avoid us sticking in uh, stakes around the crown of the plant. You know, peonies grow from this quite fleshy, swollen root. And we just feel that pushing in the stakes can really damage those roots. So forming a cage around it and allowing the peony to grow through will avoid us um, damaging any of that, of that root structure. Okay, so I'm just going to sift through these st sticks now. So these are all, all coppiced hazel. And the secret is, is to actually, if you can, grow your hazel in different conditions. The ones that we grow in either closer together or in more shade produce these longer unbranched stems, ideal for this kind of uh, task. Whereas for stake material, you actually want them branched. So these are just um, two year old. And uh, I say I cut them in, in, uh, in winter, the whole selection of them. I just need to go through now and select the right ones for this particular job. So I actually think these, these four uh, should do. What I'm, what I'm really after is something that's, that's strong enough to actually support the peony but it's yet supple enough to actually bend and, and, and push in the ground. Um, so I think these four, I'll give a go. Actually really important at any time of year really to try and keep off your soil. So you might be able to see that I'm using little boards to stand on. Um, our soil here at Sissinghurst is very heavy clay, which makes it even more important. Anyway, so I've got my four sticks and this group of peonies is quite large, so I'm only actually expecting to do half of it with one mound or dome. So I'll have two domes here eventually. So the first, first stick is quite easy to do because it doesn't really matter where you put it. I think one of the things is, is to just push it in far enough so it stays in. Last thing you want is to, for it to spring out. And of course, if you think it's too tall, because of course what you're after doing is supporting the peony and there's no point in this being much higher than the finished peony. So even pushed in the ground, I think that's a little too long. So I'm just going to take off just a bit of the end. So that's the first stick. So you might find that these are just a little bit too stiff or not very supple. So you might just need to sort of what we say, take out the tension. Well, sort of loosening those fibres, breaking those fibres a little bit, just to help that bend nicely. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, you're after making a pleasing pattern. So I'm going to put four sticks around here. So what I found the best best way to do it is you're finding about halfway between those two points and I'm pushing this one in again I'm keeping it away from the crown of the peony so as not to damage those roots so you just push that in far enough this is where it can start to get a bit tricky um, because you almost need three pairs of hands so this is going to be a little bit long again so I'm just going to cut the end off that one And I'll just put that in again halfway um, between those two points, about there. Now I might end up adjusting that, so I'm not going to not going to push it all the way home. Um, 
ideally I want those to be touching. So I'm just going to take a bit more off there. Okay, third stick. Again, take out that tension. Okay. So with this one, uh, I'm going to start off. So this is a slightly thicker end. And this is the slightly thinner end of that first stick that I put in. So I'm going to put it in that same place. But this time I'm going to push it in there. And actually bend it in this fashion. I want to go over that, that one but under that one. This just helps just to sort of lock it in place. Sometimes you need to use string just to keep it there. And then bend it down. It's a little bit long. Let the end off. Bend it down. And push it in. So this is where we now use string. So we use uh, um, three ply string um, for this job. It only needs to last really until July, doesn't it? So it doesn't need to be super thick or strong string. So you may find why am I still uh, attached to that spool. It's just so much easier and less wasteful and, and, and quicker. Can you imagine sort of cutting a piece of string like that, putting my secateurs away, and then, and then tying, and then having to get my secateurs again and, and cut again. So I'm, you know, I'm making two cuts when, as you can see from that first one, if I just leave it attached there, I can just tie it once. Uh, I can have less waste because I'm not cutting the length that's either going to be too long or too short. And then when I've done, I can just cut it once and it's done. So yeah, leave yourself attached and, and also use your secateurs. You know, with sharp secateurs, they can cut string easily enough. You don't need secateurs and then a knife. So it's just trying to make every op operation just that little bit smoother and sort of quicker. No point wasting time, you know, you can spend that time doing more, more of your gardening. So we've got three sticks in there and, it, you know, there's no rule to where they are. You just need to think about, think about the peony and, you know, what are the sticks trying to do? They're just trying to form this cage, this sort of lattice work that these shoots can grow through and not drop, drop through the gaps so much around the edges. So last stick, I mean, you could put more than four in if you wanted, but we find four's kind of enough. Just take that bit of tension out. And then, so I've got two sticks there, two sticks here. So my last stick needs to finish there. Um, but that's a thick end, so ideally with a thin end. Just seems to be a nicer, more pleasing finish, thick to thin. So I'm going to put that there. So push, push that bit in. And I think I'll go around this way. And then finish again where you've got just the one stick there. So it just gets a bit thick towards this end. So I'm using my knee just to try and keep it in place. So I want it here, so I'm gonna push my knee there to keep it in place. And then push. You see, if you do it too late in the year, the ground will be too dry to get it in. I'm just holding that until I get the tie on it. Just going to wrap it round twice. And then just tie off. Look at those. So that should, I mean, I had to pull away from a tree a little bit of the roots so these few are a little bit out of the cage 
but actually I don't mind that. I quite like the fact that all of these will be supported as they grow up and flower kind of at this level. And there might be just a few that just kind of escape. And that just gives the whole garden that sort of lived in feel rather than it all being trussed up. So that's one dome finished and we've got a few more to do all dotted around the garden here. And it's an experiment and we'll see, we'll see if it works. For me, it feels the right thing to do. It feels more sustainable than using the metal uh, stakes that we used to use. And actually it's something that once we get uh, into the sequence of doing this and we, we know the size of the peony, we can actually put these structures in earlier in the year when we're less busy. You know, it's such a busy time now with so much to do. Yeah, actually, because these are attractive, I wouldn't mind seeing those dotted through even in sort of February time. So let's see if it works and then we can uh, uh, adapt and, and grow the idea for next season. <laughs>